Right, if you took Michael Lewis's bestseller about the mortgage meltdown and adapted it for the EU debt crisis, Mike Cerami might be your lead character. Just like the hedge fund managers in the big short who bet against mortgage bonds, Mike, a portfolio manager at Eaton Vance, bought credit default swaps on some $50 million of Greek debt six years ago. He calls it his cheap lottery ticket. He's with us from Boston this morning to talk about it and, of course, what he's doing in European investing right now. Mike, first of all, tell us what you did. You bought these credit default swaps back in 2005. It is so reminiscent of what these other guys did about the American mortgage market. What made you certain that this was a bet worth taking because it seems like it was quite cheap? Well, th thanks for having me on the show. Um, you never know if anything's completely certain. I mean, one of the benefits that we have is we look at countries all over the world. So we had a unique perspective, perhaps, on looking at Europe's problems. And back then, we knew a couple things. One is that Greece is not Germany. And the other is that the pricing of the bonds in the market were such that, uh, that they were pretending that Greece is Germany. So when I say it's a sort of cheap or almost free lottery ticket, it's because the spreads on the bonds between those two countries were next to nothing. Mike, what did it cost you to put this position on? What did it cost you, if you will, to take a flyer on Greece? Well, we put the trade on in a, a number of different points in time, and the, the cost was something around 12 and a half basis points to around 29 basis points. So, so, in other words, very little downside and potentially, if Greece played out the way that you thought it might, massive upside, which is exactly what's happened for you. Yeah, I mean, the asymmetry was in, uh, in the favor of the investor that was going short. I mean, it, it was massive. There was very little downside. You knew at most you were paying roughly 20 basis points a year to buy this protection, and you had all the upside if, if things go poorly. Okay, now on a mark-to-market basis, just how much money have you made on this position? Um, you know, we haven't released those numbers, so and I don't have them at the, the tip of my fingers, so I, I'm sort of reluctant to, to well, put a number there. Well, ballpark it. I mean, but what, it, what it, kind it, of return are we talking about? Again, if it's, if it's anything like the big short, um, you know, you're, you're talking about returns in the hundreds of, of basis points, if not more, are you not? Oh, sh uh, certainly. I mean, it's, uh, it was only a few years later, really, that uh, spreads went from 20 to 100 and then started marching higher from there to, to 500, 6, 7, 800, 900. Now spreads are sitting. Uh, so so you're, looking, you're looking at a 10 bagger at the very least? For, for part of it, sure. All right, let's talk about what you're doing now, perhaps even more relevant to the conversation. If you saw the prospect of making money on Greece way back then, and not many people were talking about Greece in 2005, uh, just like they weren't talking about subprime mortgage debt. What are you investing in now? Where do you see opportunities to make a similar asymmetrical bet to buy an out-of-the-money option with limited downside and massive upside? Well, it's not as extreme today as it once was but back in 2005, 2006, but I think we're seeing similar opportunities in Western Europe. I mean, the spreads are still quite low. If you look at a country like Spain, spreads are around 350 basis points. Spreads in France are around 100 basis points. I think this asymmetry is still in, the, in favor of the investors that go short. Sure, spreads can tighten. It's not like it was back in 2005, but how much tighter are spreads going to go? I mean, Spain, we know is not Greece. Maybe they go from 350 to, uh, to 200. Maybe they go to 100. Uh, but there's plenty of room for these spreads to move uh, much wider towards 1,000. There's severe problems that are going to take a long time to be addressed. We're not going to see uh, much in the way of solutions this weekend. So I, I think of the situation as largely the same today as it once was back then, just uh, not as attractive. So, Michael, it sounds to me, and I think this is important for for people to hear as though you're tuning out the noise. You're not listening to the politicians who say that they're, uh, that they're going to get this situation resolved. You're looking at the cold, hard numbers, the future that Europe faces uh, fiscally, right, financially, and saying there's just no way it can get better in the, in the near term than it is today. Yeah, I, I think you have to block out the noise. I mean, you, you have to recognize that there's a, there's a sort of two-fold connected problem here. There's a debt problem. There's a competitiveness problem. This isn't something that can be solved over the weekend. It takes a lot of hard work, and it takes a, a long period of time. So, uh, you know, I think the, the, the way out of this, at least the, the path one needs to take, is to start restructuring this debt. 
um, this seems to be somewhat of a red line for policymakers. So, so until we start hearing more about you know real, honest restructurings, I, I'm trying to block everything out. All right, Michael. Great to see you this morning and to hear you uh, to hear your story. It's pretty remarkable. Michael Sarami, a portfolio manager at Eaton Vance. Yes, the Big Short Part Two. Michael bet against Greek sovereign debt, just the way that some hedge fund managers here in the United States bet against subprime mortgages.